Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabara here, and I'm doing a movie review this week. It's called Monster House. I know it's not Halloween, but I thought it'd be okay to review it anyway because I just recently picked this up back in January at Target. And speaking of which, this was a Target exclusive that came out in 2015 mostly because they were about to uh, sell a free movie pass for uh, the movie Hotel Transylvania 2 which is already on Blu-ray so apparently Target was still selling these and I picked this up for $7.50 so it was a good deal and this is of course a Blu-ray and DVD combo pack that has um, I'll see if I can open this. <laughs> yeah, which just has a an open season scared silly uh, advertisement <laughs> along with these all advertisements of all the DVDs that carry the cover art that they were coming up with all Blu-ray and DVD combo packs and it has um, the look of it, so you can see the the old DVD that has the map, and the other one is just the original artwork for Blu-rays, because back in 2006, uh, Sony was releasing tons of Blu-rays with this artwork, because it was brand new at the time. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, and there's a bit of a tiny crack right here, but not too bad it's, you know it, it won't break off hopefully not but either way <laughs> so I just got that cover art right here which almost looked like it was sun setting so they gave it an orange look so you see the cast right here all three of them you know, DJ Chowder and Jenny and you can see the monster house all the way <laughs> which uh, Horace uh, Never Cracker Lives. Okay. Well, anyway, the movie is about um, three kids who discovered a house that turned out to be completely wicked. And that's where Horace uh, Never Cracker, the meanest uh, old man on the block, you know, lives. So they're trying to see how mysterious this house really is. Because it actually moves and it actually grabs uh, kids and everyone you know they, they even swallow it whole you name it <laughs> and of course uh, this was the first film in years that both Robert Zemeckis and Steven Spielberg had teamed up to produce and this was a follow-up to the Polar Express which came out in 2004 that was uh, done by his team and also uh, the animators where they started to use uh, 3D motion capture, so they use all the actors to wear all the sensors, you know, all these dots over their face, and all these suits, and they wind up moving around inside uh, a set that's filled with wires and and all of the stuff that they use. Plus, they had zillions of cameras, so they'd be able to take these shots and all their body movements moving around, so they'd be able to be able to capture it on screen onto the computer to animate uh, everything that they had to go for. So it gives it a a stop motion uh, type of feel, seeing that it's CGI. <laughs> yeah. Now the first time I saw this movie was back in the summer. July 21st is when the film came out in 2006. Hard to believe. <laughs> it's been 12 years so far. Wow. <laughs> I was only 21 at the time when this when the film came out. And at the time, I just started my old YouTube channel, my early channel, which was called Joko85. And that's when I started posting all these videos and everything. But I went to go see the film that summer with my dad, along with my sister. I think I went with my brother too, 
So we all went to see the film. Um, we had a good time. Um, we had that good experience uh, seeing the film on the big screen. We didn't see it in 3D though. Granted, because my feeder didn't carry the 3D version. They, they played in select cities, so it had um, 200 feeders to play it nationwide. But we didn't get the 3D version until later in the fall. So they played it over there in uh, one of my areas, too. So we had a chance. But I just saw it in feeders and had a wonderful time. And it's great that I finally picked this up for a lot less. Since I didn't have this movie. And it's been a long time since I last saw it. So I just watched it uh, just recently. Looks as good as I remembered it. Um, the animation really holds up very well. Uh, the transfer on this Blu-ray actually looks very good, surprisingly, considering this is an early Blu-ray release. Uh, and the DVD should look just as good, too. Has ton of tons of features right here. As much as it could. As you can see in the back. <laughs> so, there you go. <laughs> So anyway, um, let's get to the review. It stars Deep Buscemi, best known for roles such as uh, Monsters, Inc., as well as Reservoir Dogs, some Adam Sandler films, as you can name of, as well as Fargo. Maggie Gyllenhaal from uh, Darnie Darko, as well as uh, Crazy Heart, uh, Stranger Than Fiction, the Dark Knight, and she's of course the sister of uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, Kevin James from The King of Queens and some several uh, Adam Sandler films, and of course the film Paul Blart's Mall Cop. Jason Lee from My Name is Earl, the TV series, along with uh, some Kevin Smith movies including Dogma, uh, as well as Underdog. Yes, the live-action movie and all these Alvin and the Chipmunks live-action films. Not really into. Yeah, Catherine O'Hara from Beetlejuice, as well as Home Alone and <laughs> several others. Of course, she's a veteran for SCTV. Yeah, Kathleen Turner, as we all know, you know she was... Uh, <laughs> Jessica Rabbit, uh, the voice of Jessica Rabbit and Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which Robert Zemeckis had done, yeah, teaming up with Steven Spielberg, so this is the first in years. And I know she also did Serial Mom, uh, Romance in the Stone, along with The Jewel of the Nile, Body Heat, every single film she's been in, yes, even V.I. Wachowski, yeah. Fred Willard, it's been a lot of stuff, no matter what, <laughs> including the uh, Anchorman, yeah. Also, we had uh, stars like Mitchell Musso, which yes, he did the TV show Hannah Montana. Not into it. <laughs> yeah, Sam Lerner and Spencer Locke. It's written by Dan Harmon, Rob Shrub. And Pamela Peddler, of course we all know who Dan Harmon is because he went on to do the TV series Community, which believe it or not, was based on his experience at GCC, which is Galeno Community College, the college that I attend to. <laughs> yeah. And they both went on to do the TV series uh, Rick and Morty, and it's directed by Gil Keenan. Sad to say, this was the only film that he's ever done that was very good. But then he went on to do The Forgettable, uh, City of Ember, followed by the crummy remake of Poltergeist, yeah, based on the 1982 film that was directed by Toby Hooper, uh, with the help of Steven Spielberg, which he did all of that. <laughs> yeah, there we go. 
The mood begins in the fall of October 30th. That's when we saw that shot of of that leaf that's that came from a tree and it just pulled off during that particular windy day and it just goes directly just just like the the shot in the movie Forrest Gump which Barbara Sumerkis had done where they just showed the shot of the fetter just flying around as the wind blows and it just lands onto the spot where he's at <laughs> sitting on the bench and everything well they did manage to put that particular shot in this movie where we spotted a little girl riding on the tricycle and you know, going around singing and and just uh, saying hello fence hello leaves hello sky and that is until she got stuck in the lawn of an old wicked house where the meanest guy on the block lives named Horace Nebercracker. So just when the leaf just uh, stayed on that particular spot and just moves around all the way straight to his house, that's when he opens the door, he got out and frightening the little girl and took her trike, broke it into two pieces and just scared her off like that. Then you begin to see a shot of him uh, that's gone straight into the the telescope and that's where we meet 12 year old boy DJ Walters which he just took a picture from his Polaroid camera write down the dates you know begin to f find some suspicion going around the house while his parents were away during the whole day so that way um, his babysitter Z will arrive. So then his best friend Chowder had came. He just wore a Halloween mask of a gillman. It seems to be. So then, you know, he was just hanging out with DJ, decided to shoot some hoops on Chowder's basketball, but then suddenly it bounces off, you know, hit his head and and wants up landing on Nebercracker's lawn. So he offered DJ to go get it until Nebercracker had came out and just warns uh, DJ by carrying him all the way up to never go back to his house ever again and just leave him alone. And suddenly he got a heart attack and he was rushed to the hospital on an ambulance and then Z arrives just to babysit DJ but <laughs> decided to make up her own rules by just hanging around all alone while asking DJ to go to bed yeah so she could just listen to music and and be able to hang around the house she also brought in her boyfriend Bones <laughs> Which then DJ woke up and he just heard a phone call coming from the house. So he began to see something suspicious going around. But, yeah, Z's boyfriend Bones just scare him off and, you know, just wearing the, the Halloween mask. And, <laughs> and then DJ was about to warn both of them that there's something mysterious going around in the house. But they didn't believe him. So then, during that night, uh, DJ decided to sneak out and try to find Chowder, because yeah, he has a, a rocky talkie, just to go see uh, what's going on in the house. Well, he began to suspect uh, you know, Z and, and Bones, where Bones was telling the story about the house across the street. And talk about the neighbor next door and all the other other secrets behind all that especially since he was a kid before where he actually played a kite but never cracker had took it from him so anyway uh, DJ and Chowder went all the way they're about to go um, check out the house to see what's going on 
and then they discover that the house actually moves. It definitely has a mind of its own. In fact, uh, the lawn actually moves. It, you know, it took the sign "Beware" all the way down. You know, all all the toys that were in the lawn had disappeared, and and that's when the house started to um, have a mind of its own by by actually going after DJ and Chowder. Yes, because the house actually has uh, two eyes, which are windows. It even has a mouth, which is uh, <laughs> which is basically just uh, which is just part of the roof that they have in the house, just an extra roof where it brings in all the shade. So, so anyway, they they have the that was actually the the teeth, and the door is just uh, it just opens up with uh, a carpet that's like a tongue. So it just grabs. Um, everyone around just eats them and swallow them all up just like that well that's what happened to Bones too when he spotted uh, the kite well he was all drunk yeah, he just drank got kicked out by his girlfriend uh, Z and there you go so then the next morning which was Halloween that's where we meet uh, a little redhead girl named Jenny who just um, decided to sell some Halloween candies for her academy. So she just going door to door. Yeah, just went inside uh, DJ's house. Yeah, which we basically see Z, you know, talking to her. Of course, she took the Halloween candy, gave it to DJ, and Chowder, which uh, <laughs> already, you know, they're they're setting up um, the equipment that they have. Yeah, mostly because of what happened last night. <laughs> so they actually took out uh, bottles of Mountain Dew, <laughs> and they, and they just peed on it. Yeah, so they just put urine in there, and and they do actually have some water guns, so that way they can prepare themselves. So then both DJ and Chowder had spotted Jenny going straight to the house, just trying to warn him not to go in there uh, until. The house suddenly was alive and about to eat Jenny, so they saved Jenny's life. They just went up to um, DJ's room, you know, basically showing all the works that they have. So then they begin to explain, you know, what's going on. So they thought the only way to prepare themselves was to go um, meet um, a pizza delivery guy who's also... Um, a video arcade challenger named Skull, which I know his real name is Reginald Skolinski, which he's also the expert of supernatural, which basically he learns that uh, the house is a rare monster that creates with human soul, which is coming from, and here's one of the biggest spoilers, it's actually coming from Never Cracker's wife, Name Constance, which apparently she was um, a fat lady, weighs over 675 pounds. So basically, we begin to learn the story about uh, Nebucracker when he was a uh, a soldier uh, for the U.S. Army, known as the Demolition Squad. So he's an expert. He basically went to the circus. He met Constance. Apparently they were throwing a lot of fruits on her. But he loves her so much that he wanted to help her get out of the circus and decided to live on their own. So this is where they were building a house on their own on that particular landfill. But then suddenly as kids started to make fun of her, yeah, just when they were about to work on the the new house, yeah, you know, with the cement and everything, and and all the and all the wood and you know, all put together, she actually fell all the way down, and the cement actually uh, fell on her, and then 
she died. So that's how um, over the years um, Nebba Cracker has been taking good care of her in the house hoping that uh, she will keep her alive as the human soul suddenly possesses the house. So there you go. So a anyway, uh, back to the story. Uh, Skull decided that the only way to uh, stop the house was to go after the heart, which is actually on top of the chimney. Their plan was to go uh, grab some cold medicine, some water guns, yeah, especially the ones that are filled with pee, and urine. So that way they go uh, also try to build like a, uh, a figure by using the Halloween mask to actually go all the way straight. But, of course, Jenny did call the police, and that's where we meet uh, Officer Landers and Lester, yeah, his partner. Anyway, the kids were trying to um, warn them that there was a house that's about to eat everyone alive, but they don't seem to believe them themselves. But then, but then later on, just right when they were about to set up their, their uh, figure just so they can find out... If they're not lying, well, they're about to arrest them after that. So, because they knew this was a private property. But, just as soon as the cop decided to go inside, yeah, Officer Lester, um, he's about to be taken by the house uh, along with uh, Landers. And then, uh, they ate both of them while the house was about to go after the police car where DJ, Chowder, and Jenny were at. So they're being eaten all the way into the house, so now they're actually inside. So they begin to see what the house really looks like. Yeah. Now there was actually a deleted scene in the movie where, which is only on the trailers and TV spots, where they basically just show the police car you know, with the police officers inside, and the house just swallowed them up. <laughs> just like that. It's, it's not in the movie, sadly, but if you find TV spots and trailers, especially online, uh, you'll be able to find it. But, of course, you know, there was a scene where, where the house actually did swallow the dog. Yeah, and that's what happened. So, anyway, when DJ Chowder and Jenny have arrived inside the house, uh, they begin to see and spot everything that's going on. They even found the the ubula, which apparently they, they decided to shoot it with with their guns, and they and suddenly they they wound up uh, falling all the way down into the basement. Yeah, because the house was moving around. You see, like all these uh, giant holes everywhere, because the house just controls everything has a mind of its own. They begin to uh, spot all the the toys that's been hidden inside the basement including Constance that's already uh, dead and it has the cement all covered up but yeah once the cement broke she, you know she's a skeleton now. So they're trying to escape as soon as they can and once they got out of the house uh, well, at least they were safe and sound, but they were hoping they'd find a way to stop it until Nevercracker had arrived at the hospital. And, yeah, there's a bit of a nitpick where he actually had a cast. Like, he must have had a broken arm, uh, which doesn't fully explain how he got a broken arm because he just had a, a heart attack. But I guess they had to throw it in there just for... For what it is. I mean, maybe, you know, he, he probably got a broken arm just while he grabbed him. Maybe. So, of course, DJ had to explain to Nebercracker about what was going on, um, as I already explained already what happened. So they try to find a way to actually stop the house from attacking everyone, so the house suddenly moves around it controls with with all the branches, you know, because the branches are the hands, so, and everything. So they're just about to go after the kids and Nebercracker. 
So they have to grab the dynamites. Well, Nebocracker had to grab the dynamites, so he'll be able to plan on, you know, throwing the all the way into the chimney, which that's where the heart is located. But that didn't seem to work until he gave the dynamite to the kids, so they had to go all the way to to the construction site where they're about to build a new home. They had to go all the way to the crane and while Chowders decided to fight it off by using the elevator, uh, just fighting off with the house I was attacking him so then DJ and and Jenny decided to go all the way up to the, the crane so that way they could throw the dynamite into the chimney and once he did that <laughs> there we go the house was destroyed disappeared and Luck me had it, uh, everyone's safe. So now when they're still getting ready for Halloween, since they're getting ready for trick-or-treating, even though <laughs> his DJ didn't want to do trick-or-treating because he's already getting too old, but then again, <laughs> he's 12 years old. But I guess you'll never get too old. So uh, DJ... Jenny, along with uh, Chowder, decided to help out taking all the toys to all the kids out there. You know, the ones that, that they once had, you know, including the little girl who had uh, the trike. So, put them everything together. So, everything was going well. And then the parents arrived. So, Z already left. So, everything's going great. So, now uh, DJ and Chowder just went to go trick-or-treating. So, they had plenty of time. <laughs> yeah. And yes, um, the dog, uh, Z's boyfriend, Bones, and yes, the cops, you know, Landers and Lester, they're all alive. They got out of there safe and sound, out of the hole that was during the end credits. So there you go. So now we know that they survived. <laughs> um, I really love this movie a lot. Um, it was well made, well done, um, has a great concept, the way they did it, I mean the way that they created the, the Monster House was um, superb, very creepy and very scary too when you think about it, uh, when they did it. In fact, um, they actually did record the sound effects uh, for the Monster House. Uh, which Kathleen Turner also provided, so they had to sync it into it. They actually did use uh, the sound effects from an old uh, house that they had to demolish when they shot it. So they recorded the sound to sync in with the monster house as we know it. So it looks really interesting. And the animation was very solid, very stunning too. The way it was done, it gives it a stop motion feel to it even though it's CGI. So this was done by Sony Pictures Image Works, as I just mentioned. Um, it looks real, it feels real, and it, it really moves around very well. And, and the 3D effects for this movie would definitely look even better you know, once you have to wear your 3D glasses to watch it on, on the big screen <laughs> at your local theater. But of course they were using real um, Real D 3D for it, <laughs> of course. And oh, and by the way, uh, this movie was nominated for an Academy Award uh, along with uh, Cars and Happy Feet, but the movie lost to Happy Feet. I mean, even though I love Happy Feet too, yeah, the movie that had an all-star cast including Robin Williams, yeah, it was a Penguin film. This was better because um, once again, you know, these movies never get uh, any credit whatsoever with all the hard work that they've been doing, you know, with all the motion capture that they shot. You know, th this never gets a chance it deserves, and that's a shame. And they should have won, in my opinion. They should have had. I mean, I love Happy Feet, but this was a better film. I mean, it's not easy these days, you know, it's not really easy. I mean, they, they work so hard for this. 
Um, yeah, the movie did have some cliches, so they throw it in into it. But you know what? That's okay. They, they're meant to have that. That's what a horror comedy is supposed to have anyway. <laughs> and I know it does have um, a cult following over the years, so it suddenly joins in with the likes of Goonies, uh, The Monster Squad, and several others. Even The Nightmare on Before Christmas and Coraline come to mind. Even Paranorman, too. <laughs> yeah, those movies. So it, it follows right there. Uh, I love the characters that they got. Uh, DJ was very good, too, uh, along with Chowder, his best friend, who's chubby, but he's always coming up with all these uh, <laughs> funny dialogue that, that he had to go for. I mean, then again, they always come up with something. And of course, Jenny, you know, she was cute. As a redhead, I mean, yeah, they're about to fall in love with her, too, <laughs> in a way. Um, the way they created the monster house was just, wow. I mean, that's that's how scary and creepy that they really did right there, so it was perfect. The fact that Calvin Turner provided the voice, once again, which is amazing. And, of course, um, Horace uh, Nevercracker, you know, voiced by Steve Buscemi. Hard to believe, Steve Buscemi <laughs> did a great job um, providing the voice of an old man who was very mean, but we begin to learn that he was a soldier of the demolition squad. So, interesting. And, once again, the animation was stunning. You got all the other characters, like the, uh, the parents of DJ. You know, they were voiced by uh, Catherine O'Hara and Fred Willard. Yeah, Z was um, the babysitter, voiced by Maggie Joan Hall. Yeah, the, her boyfriend uh, <laughs> Bones, voiced by Jason Lee. And of course, we get Officer uh, Landers and Lester, both voiced by Kevin James and Nick Cannon. And of course, who couldn't forget uh, Skull? That was voiced by John Heater. Yes, John Heater from Napoleon Dynamite. That's right. <laughs> he was very good in this movie, too. So this was quite different from his Napoleon Dynamite uh, personality. <laughs> so he plays a whole different character here. But he has done a lot of stuff, too. Because you know, like, after Napoleon Dynamite, he went on to do films like... Uh, the Bench Warmers, uh, Just Like Heaven, even the film uh, Blades of Glory, you know, Will Ferrell. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I love that. Um, actually, has some wonderful music, uh, wonderful cinematography, too. I mean, the music, of course, was done by Douglas Pipes, or Piffs, and cinematography, Xavier Perez, uh, Go Betts, and of course the editing was done by Pepper and Wally and Anna P. Scott. So they they really did a great job. They they did a lot of work and they had to do a lot of shots, a lot of uh, techniques they had to use with computers to to create all these uh, the three D uh, motion capture shots. They also used the replicas by creating the characters by using uh, clay so mix it in with it, it just looks so well done yeah. its budget was only seventy five um, million dollars hard to believe I mean going back to uh, the Polar Express it was only hundred sixty five million dollars when they made that so this was a a smaller scale budget but it's still almost as huge as ever and it actually did pretty well at the box office um, during the summer. So it, it earned something and it continued to go on um, all the way through the the fall. Especially when Halloween was, was getting there until it finally got released on, on DVD, VHS, uh, PSP, yes, or at this rate UMD. Because uh, Sony did used to have those UMDs where you get to play... Uh, all your movies uh, on the PSP, yeah, which is like uh, Game Gear, Game Boy type. 
it's different. You get to play all all these smaller discs in there. And of course, Blu-rays. You get everything. <laughs> so. And so anyway, it's um, it's a great film. I um, highly recommend it. So I give Monster House five stars. I'm Joseph Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.